We are Dan and Christina from Weekends Re Rome, and this is our van tour video. Instead of doing the traditional tour in someone's driveway, like right now we're in Dan's brother's driveway, we are going to take you up to Hatcher Pass. Both of us grew up in Alaska. I think it's probably one of our favorite spots, so we'll take the van up there and give you the tour. Hi, we're Dan and Christina from Weekends Your Rome, and this is our van tour video. We are currently in Hatcher Pass at Independence Mine. We spent a lot of our youth up here skiing, biking, hiking, so we thought it'd be a great spot to do the van tour. Welcome to our home. First thing, we'll give you a tour of the cab part of the van. When we bought it, both seats did not have heated seats, so we took them apart, added heated seats, and installed switches into the dash to keep it factory. We installed a lowering seat base on this passenger seat, so when we install our swivel, that way the whole entire seat sits at factory height. Without this lowered seat base from Mercedes, the seat is way too high. Her feet didn't even touch the ground, um, so that was a huge upgrade. Real quick before we go inside, another update that we did is this extra handle in the entryway. It's really came in handy. We did not add a running board to the bottom of this, and so it is a little bit of a step to get up into the van. Another quick modification in the entryway, we built out part of the step so that the kitchen cabinetry could sit on top of it. It did lose a little bit of space, but it's enough to get up and down pretty easily. We added a couple of command hooks right here for our flip-flops. Keeps them up off the ground since we are a little limited on space. We also hold our remote here for the fan system. We have the Max Air fans, um, two of them, one in the front, one in the back. And then this also holds our dual dimming light switch and the two 120 plugs. The front part of the van is our main living area. So we have it's kind of like our living room with a bench that has a lot of storage inside. We'll show that to you here in a second. We also decided to do the Lagoon swivel for the table. So you can just loosen it up and it'll swivel around so that one of us can sit here to eat and one of us will sit in the swiveling passenger side. You can also just sit here at the bench. So this has came in really handy. We usually just leave it right here and it stays out of the way and then you can just lock it back in place. We just did a simple hobby pine board and stained it for the table. It's been holding up pretty well for us. The cushions we had upholstered in California, that's about one of the only things that we didn't do ourselves. We wanted something that was actually gonna last and so we decided on a Sumbrella fabric. Um, we've actually already spilt a couple things on it and it held up really well. So to take it apart, this comes off. This stays is actually Velcroed to the back. So we built the bench to have two locks, one here and one here, um, to hopefully deter smash and grabs. We keep everything in here, um, so nothing's sitting out. It's got three main compartments to hold different things. Again, this was supposed to be for our dogs. Food, things like that. So now we're just using it as extra pantry, cleaning supplies, um, some computer equipment, camera equipment, paper towel holder, and we also have a smaller, I think it's a 20 inch TV in here. Moving on to the kitchen, we did a custom butcher block that we cut. It fits the sink as well as around the metal. It has kind of an edge that sticks out right here. And then the window and ends at the edge of our bed. We decided not to do a built-in stove top, so we're using a one burner and we have a two burner propane camping stove. We recently upgraded our lithium, which we'll talk about more when we show you the garage. Um, so we're gonna be able to use an electric induction cooktop, which we'll be getting here probably in the next week or so. 
For the sink, we did a little bit deeper sink. Um, that way we can wash our hair in it if we don't wanna use the shower. Um, it also fits a good amount of dishes for when we go to clean them. Inside of it is a grate. Um, we picked it up, I think on Amazon, it was actually listed as an add-on for this sink. And it keeps your dishes up off the bottom, which has been really nice because anybody who lives in a van knows it's not always level. And so you can get water that pools up on one side. This way it keeps everything dry sitting in here. The first faucet is for our, um, it's clean and filtered water, but we don't drink it. So we wash our dishes with it. Uh, if we need to rinse off anything outside, we have that, which this can turn for. This is for our filtered drinking water. It goes through a three stage filter. And then we also have a soap pump right here. And then that way we don't have to keep pulling out a soap bottle. You can just be right here washing your hands and use that. We have three main cabinets for the kitchen. One is for all of our utensils. Um, so spatula, big spoons, silverware. The second cabinet down is where we have our coffee cups, drinking water cups, bowls, plates, some Tupperware. And then the last drawer is where we keep our pots, pans, cutting boards, some hot pads, towels, and a growler, which is the most important for Dan. These are also held on with heavy pull latches in the back, so that's what's holding them so they don't slide back and forth when we're driving. The main cabinet underneath the sink is what houses some of our cleaning supplies, our plastic bags for the trashes. It's where our main trash is, our one burner stove, the water filter system. It's also where we collect our gray water from the sink. For the refrigerator, we chose the Isotherm 130. I think it's 4.6 cubic feet. Um, definitely gives us enough space for I would say probably a week's worth of food. We're trying to eat a lot more fresh stuff, so we go through it a lot faster, um, but there's plenty of storage. You could probably go longer than a week if you really wanted to. There's also a freezer up at the top. It's kind of just enough for ice and a couple other small frozen things. I would compare it to a shoe box, but it's been wonderful to have something for our ice to be in. The hardest part of the build for us was definitely the upper cabinets. In the front of the van, we have two cabinets right here. One is for our bathroom stuff. And so just kind of like a, a medicine tote, uh, some other stuff. We've been using these little gray totes. And this is so that we can keep our stuff separate. When we stay in people's houses, then we have something that we can take in with us. We generally don't stay in people's houses, but we love using their shower, it's worked out great. The next cabinet is kind of like our junk drawer. We've got some leftover dry goods, grocery bags, our games, kind of what we use for mailing postcards, um, and then just a couple other random things. We've tried to leave it as open as possible so that we have more room to put stuff as we buy it. On this side is kind of back into the kitchen. And this is where we have kind of our main pantry of dry goods. We ended up installing kind of just a, a black elastic band to hold some of the taller things in. That's came in really handy, as well as I think from the container store, we got just a white half shelf that we put in. That way we can utilize all the space that's in that cabinet. And then the last one is Dan's liquor and coffee cabinet, as I like to call it. It's where he keeps the liquor that he buys along on our trip and his coffee paraphernalia, which there is a lot of. If anyone's curious about what we do for our coffee, let us know and we could do another video on that. For the poles, um, we did leather poles. Um, we got them off of Etsy. They all match. 
and they're on everything. So we have no regular knobs. They're all the leather, um, which you do kind of have to fix after you use, but it's been great. It doesn't catch on your pants. You're not running into any. And for these, when you open them, they do touch. And we found that with knobs, it was dinging the ceiling. So with this, it doesn't do anything. And now to our favorite part of the van is the shower and bathroom area. We didn't have this in a previous van that we owned. And so with this one living full time, it was a priority for us. It's 24 by 32, roughly. That's the size of the RV fiberglass shower pan that we got. Uh, we used fiberglass reinforced plastic for the walls and then caulked all of the seams. We also went all the way to the edge um, with the stripping that they gave us that helps keep it all waterproof. For the shower curtain, I'm just kind of using a standard plastic, but we did steal this idea off of somebody from Instagram and the shower rod can move in and out, which gives us a lot more room in there when we're showering. For the shower faucet, it's just a standard shower faucet, but it has the on off button to shower water. <laughs> that way we can conserve water. So when you're soaping up, you can turn the water off. And then when you're ready to rinse off, turn the water back on. It does have a hot and cold mixer. And then for the toilet, we're using a nature's head composting toilet. Um, it's urine diverting. And so there's no smell, super easy cleanup. Um, we're using peat moss for the medium in the main toilet part. Um, it's not our primary bathroom. We do try to still use bathrooms on the road, um, but in rare emergencies, it's there and it's really came in handy. I can't recommend that enough definitely worth the thousand dollar price tag it sung a little bit when we bought it but now we love having it and wouldn't trade it for the world for anyone interested we did do a video of the shower build we had a really hard time finding any videos out there when we did it it was a very steep learning curve on what products to use for the wall what caulking to use for the edges how to get the right shower pan and the orientation of the drain hole for it as well as how to install the toilet um, a lot of people permanently install it in the bottom with um, the little l brackets we didn't want that in there because the toilet's actually removable and we can shower in here without it if we want to so we actually just did two hooks around the back um, but again the video is on youtube if you're interested in watching it it kind of gave a step by step of how we did everything Moving on to the bedroom. The mattress is almost a king size. It's what we ordered online was a king and then cut down a little bit on the side and a little bit on the end. It's actually a three foam system. So we've got the main foam and then two to add some cushion. Underneath the mattress, we did bed slats instead of a solid piece of plywood and that's to help with ventilation so there's not any mold. That seems to be a reoccurring problem for a lot of people. Above the bed, we each have a spot to hold kind of our knickknacks, so books, um, iPad, fans. We can show you that here in a second. Below the bed is kind of the garage. And so we had this divider we put in and we had a little bit of extra space. And so here we hold the speakers and books, put these little bands in like the upper kitchen cabinet to hold this stuff in. And then this box is kind of a, a triple use box. It's a step to get into the bed since the bed is so high up. It's a laundry box and it's also an extra seat that we can move around the van as needed. And the bottom just has felt pads so it doesn't scratch the floor. Each of us has um, our own cabinets for our clothes. So the first cabinet is mine. Last cabinet is Dan's. And then in this one, we've been utilizing these bags. So we have socks, underwear, active wear. It keeps it all separate. And then we just wrote on the edge what it is so that we know when we get in here and it keeps it all organized. 
So after about a month on the road, we realized that back here in the bedroom, we needed spots to hold uh, books, iPad, chargers for phones. And so this one um, we built on top of this box, which actually holds the mixers and plumbing for the shower, which is right behind this wall. Um, just did a quick little pine box that holds kind of all of our little knickknacks. And then here is our USB plugs for phone chargers, as well as a whiz gear magnet to hold my phone while it charges. Dan's side has one up here. Um, his is a little bit smaller, holds his fan and a couple other little things. Back here is also our thermostat for the eSpar heater that Dan will tell you a little bit more about. Um, we put it back here so we can reach it at night. Um, nobody wants to get out of bed when it's super cold. And so this is keeping really handy. We have um, two things that we didn't make in the van by ourselves. One was the bench actual foam cushion. And the second thing was the window blinds. We did make a set for our first van. We didn't really like the way that they fit very well. So we got a full set of window blinds from Van Made Gear. And these things are amazing. They're ripstop nylon fabric. And they came, the front ones came in an actual case, but Christina sewed up this one for our second set. And they are magnetic, fold up real nice and small. So they just magnet right into the window and create a light proof seal for the windows. Uh, this one's fit a little weird just because of this thing, but it fits perfect. Um, especially here in Alaska, these things have been absolutely amazing to stop all the light. Another feature that they have is you can fold them up and button them up to the actual top if you wanted to and just keep them up here. So that's been very nice. We don't use this too much. We just take them down every morning. But if you wanted to, you could. Um, another thing that they do, which is pretty cool, is we let them know that we have the CR Lawrence windows. So they magnet there, so that we can have the windows open. Insulate this part of the window, but keep the window actually open, which has been so nice. Every window in the van, we have custom blinds for. Um, being in Alaska for the whole summer, land of the midnight sun, it has been absolutely essential to block out all of the light. This is the cover that he made for the front windshield, and this thing has been amazing for heat. Um, even down in Austin when it was 95 degrees, you throw this thing up in the window and you can tell the difference. It is nuts. There's metal ribs in here to hold it up, but it just gets held up in place with our um, sun visors and then that clips up there and then we have for the side windows as well um, yeah one of the features that we added in the van that i'm so glad that we did was this blackout curtain it not only will black out this part of the cab if we're just quickly running somewhere we can just pull this thing out and block up the whole back side of the van which is really nice it doesn't look like anybody's back here also heat if it's really really hot outside we can have this thing closed and it really will keep the back side of the van nice and cool. Uh, tucks behind the cabinet most of the time and then we'll have it tied off so it's just real nice and tight over here. But it just slides over and then uses the same Velcro that our screens use and it just Velcros over there and then we'll just clip it right in here between that and it goes all the way over. This provides some great privacy whenever we're somewhere that we want to just pull the shade real quick, take a nap or jump back here and change. It's been really nice. We installed two Max Air fans on one in the front, one in the rear. Um, they both have the reverse control. So one can be going out, one can be coming in. It creates amazing cross ventilation. Paired with the CR Lawrence windows, this thing is incredible. They have a rain shield as well. So even if it's rainy outside, we could have these things running. Um, remote control. There's temperature gauge on here as well. So you can set the temperature you want and the fan will automatically turn on and start venting the fan. Uh, it's automatically set to 78. So if it ever gets above 78 in here, it will just start uh, venting the fan for us. Yeah. Through Van Made Gear, we have all the windows covered and the fans. They made us these with magnets. And then in the actual trim of the fan, we installed little magnets as well. And that way that gets blocked out as well. You don't realize how much light those things lit in until you're living up in Alaska for the summer. 
Christine was talking about the thermostat back by the bed for the e-spar heater. The e-spar heater is actually located underneath the passenger seat. It's got a directional um, heat valve on it so we can turn it to heat up the whole floor. So we wake up in the morning, the floor is all nice and warm or just heat up the whole van. Uh, we've had this in sub freezing temperatures and it heats the van so nice and warm. Um, it actually pulls all the fuel from the diesel tank of the Sprinter. There's actually a fuel pickup that Mercedes installed on these Sprinter vans. We wanted to keep the control side of things pretty simple. So we just have a couple switches inside the van. The rest of it is all Bluetooth, which makes it very, very nice and convenient. The first one is just our water pump. We don't want the water pump running all the time. So we will turn it off and on as necessary. We're running the sink. We could just turn the, the water pump on. You could hear it click on there and it will build pressure in the system. The second one is the light for the shower, real basic. And the third one is the drain for our holding tank for our gray water. Uh, when we get to a place where we can drain it, we get to an RV dump station, we hook up the hose and just push the button and it automatically will start draining out the tank. Um, the next thing we have is our Victron battery monitor. It is a Bluetooth battery monitor setup that is attached to my lithium setup. It is amazing. I just installed this thing about a day ago and I can't get enough of that thing. That thing is great. And then we have a uh, remote switch for our inverter. We have a 3000 watt inverter underneath the bed in the garage area. And I don't want that running all the time. It drains the batteries, even just being on. So we have a switch, turn it on and off. One feature we added on both big doors is screens for both of them. And then they have a magnet in the middle. This has been an absolute game changer as far as um, having both the doors open and creating a nice cross ventilation. And they just roll down. And we ordered them on Amazon and got dimensions as close to the door as we could. They're actually a little bit bigger than the door size and then had to cut them down and re-sew on the Velcro. They just Velcro on the sides. And then now, I can just walk in and out. And then once they settle, they'll actually get straighter and then start sealing up all the way down the middle so you can walk in and out with that. These screens on this one and then also on the back door as well. And then the magnets that saw it inside the actual screen. So you can just flip it over and attach to the door. The same thing as over here if you really need it open. But it's been nice just to walk in and out. This is the reason why we went with this high bed platform design. This is the garage of the Sprinter. It is high enough to where I can fit both the mountain bikes, all of our gear under here, water storage, battery storage, and still have enough headroom when I sit in bed that I don't hit my head. This is our drawer slide, 250 pound drawer pulls. It pulls out about four feet so we can mount both the bikes on here. The bikes are mounted. They're not going anywhere. So all of our gear back here, if anything tips over or falls, it's not gonna hit any of our battery storage. It's at appropriate heights where both the bikes slide underneath the bed. And that way the bed is still low enough to where I can sit up in bed. Underneath the bed, this is the control system for underneath the bed. There's a light switch. We have two strips of LEDs under there, um, a 12 volt socket. We have an air pump that we use to pump up all the van tires, the bike tires. We have a hand pump for the bikes as well. And then two USBs back here for any of your charging needs. The bed is welded steel. It's a whole bed frame. It's actually removable. 
There is rails along both sides here and there, both mounted to the van. And within six bolts, you can take this whole bed frame out if you wanted to. Some of the features of the garage is the water tank and the water fill. The water fill is located on the inside of the van, so we open up the back doors, it's secure. We did not want to drill another hole into the side of the van, so we have it inside. We use a inline filter for any of our water sources, and then we have the three-stage water filter for our drinking water. This is a 30-gallon fresh water tank. It is used for all of our water purposes, the showers, the sink, drinking water. Uh, it'll last us about three, maybe four days if we're both taking showers. It's been excellent. SureFlow water pump, it's been a great. We added a <laughs> cage last minute. It looks kind of janky, but it works great. Next up, I'm gonna show you what we have up top. It's our three 100 watt solar panels from Renergy. That is what powers all of this down here. Um, we have two ways to charge our batteries. We have the solar panels up top, and then this wire coming in is from the isolator. The battery isolator is sitting underneath the driver's seat, and that takes any extra power from the van when it's running and sends it back here and charges our batteries as well. So if we're in the shady area, the redwoods, or it's rainy, and we're not getting all the solar we need, then we can get extra power from the battery isolator. The batteries we're using, we just upgraded to these 100 amp hour uh, lithium from Battleborn. Uh, these things weigh half the weight of our old AGM batteries and we have twice as much usable power. We're just using 300 amp hours of lithium. Uh, powers 3000 watt inverter. And the only reason we have such a big inverter is because of our water system. We have a water heater. It's a Bosch 2.7 gallon water heater and it's sealed, it sits back here. All we do is just touch a button and we get hot water in about 15 minutes. So two more features before we leave the garage area. One being the shoe organizer. Christina found this on Instagram. It's just a normal over the door shoe organizer that we cut in half and drilled into the back here. It's been great. Holding our shoes, bug spray, bear spray, suntan lotion, all the random stuff that we have. Another thing is we made these. Um, they are padded, insulated, and there's another layer of insulation behind them for when we're laying in bed, it basically acts as a headboard. This has been great. That way you don't lean out and touch cold metal at night. It also keeps the heat out. These things are great. Every van we do, we're gonna do something along these lines. Another great feature is the Lumines ladder. It has been great. It bolts into the roof rails up there and they're just on one of the bead welds down there. And that way we can access our solar panels and the roof area. Kinda dirty up here. Some features on the outside of the van the light bar, we have a satellite radio, and the awning. I'll show you all three of those. We just mounted a switch in here. It's just, this is our Sasquatch light. So when we're driving around, it's really, really nice to have all the extra light. Obviously here in Alaska, we don't need it, but everywhere else we've used this thing quite a bit. One more feature that we installed on the outside is this little tiny piece of aluminum. There's an engineering company down in San Diego I think it's called Norton Fabrication. And what it'll do, it will hold the door halfway, latch there, so that way it doesn't slide all the way open. Because if you don't have this, the door will slide all the way to the back side. And now, it's stuck there. And all we have to do is pull it to get it released. Or, it can go all the way. Thanks for checking out our home. If any of you are thinking about traveling or living in a van, I highly recommend it. The stuff you could see in just a matter of a couple months to a year of traveling has been absolutely life-changing. Hopefully you found this video informative and if you have any questions, go ahead and post them below. If you want to follow our travels for the remaining eight or so months that we have, you can follow us on Instagram at weekendsweroam.